Hey guys, and welcome to Rufus and Doofus Part 2 of Replacing the Sending Unit. And here's the one that was in there, the one that was repaired by Jeff. He did a really nice job on it. Uh, if you remember or watched the earlier video where Ulf had it, he had a big loop on his black one here, which was not supposed to be the black one. It was supposed to be these flexible hoses. <laughs> and the big loop was kinked in two places, so that wasn't doing anything good. Also, he didn't have this sock on. Holf didn't. He took that off, and he busted the one-way check valve in the in the pump. So, you know, there was a lot of things wrong with it, and Jeff did his best to, to get it to work right. But guess what? This one's out, and I just got done setting the new one in there. I wanted to film it, but just couldn't get a, a, a spot to hang the camera where it wasn't in my way. So at least you see the old one out, new one's in, and I'm going to finish screwing it in Oop, gas dripping all over me um, and actually the job is going a lot smoother than I thought it really is um, so far so good it's all I can say I don't want to jinx myself so um, let me take you under the rig with me all right and we'll see what crawls up our legs down there like I say it's like working in the jungle here you know last night I went home and had mosquito bites and ant bites all over my my uh, back all right, enough of me bitching and moaning and complaining. Let's get to work. All righty. Bye. All right, guys, that's about as best as I'm going to get the camera. And uh, like I said, I had to put the <coughs> sending unit in because otherwise the camera was in a way. But now I can get one arm in there, and I'm just going to tighten those screws down. There's ten of them here so I'm gonna just go around one more time Boop. that's nice and tight and uh, but I'll tell you this little Ryobi impact uh, screwdriver awesome little thing I use it for everything so um, let me put the fuel lines back on and we should be good to go and uh, raise the tank soon after we just inspect everything and make sure everything is okay <clears throat> And by the way, make sure you get yourself the right tool to get these fuel lines off. Because if you don't, you will curse yourself for a long time. Yep. <coughs> Alright, that one ain't going nowhere. We got to put the gas one back on which I just cleaned the end up on because it was all chewed up so let's put that back on I hope all right where'd it go there it is we can get this wrench on there. Oh. <sighs> 
I'll just give that another snug. All right, I didn't want to kill it, but I wanted it on there. And uh, everything looks pretty good. This is a vent hose. That's got to go up on top of the tank. We'll put that up there. And uh, we got to plug the pump electrical in, which is right here. And then we're going to, as we go, when we crank it up, we'll stuff these wires up in here where they belong. All right. I'm just going to go inspect the other side, and we're ready to start bringing the tank up. And I'm going to have to move the camera from where it is because it's in the way. So, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, here I am again. As usual, the battery died on me, and I didn't notice it for a while. But um, the tank is back up, and fortunately I caught it before I took all the straps off and stuff. But I just want to show you something here that you want to watch out for when you're doing this, okay? Um, if you notice, if you notice on the strap here, on the mechanism, the ratchet, it's getting very thick, all right? And what happens is once it gets to a certain point, you can't ratchet anymore so what I did when I started this job I didn't want to cut the strap it's like 26 feet long or something I didn't want to cut it so what I did is I actually got it to this point tight on the tank before I lowered it so that I knew I'd be able to get back up to that point without having too much strap on the spool um, so you might want to watch out for that. Also, your other option is to cut the strap so that you don't have two straps winding up on the spool. And if you're familiar with these uh, tie-down ratchets, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I've got the bolt on the front of the ta tank. That's all nice and tight. And I was able to get this one here tightened up. And I have the one in the rear, which is the same thing, over here. To tighten up all right and as soon as I get those tight I can release the straps and then those uh, metal straps that go across the bottom of the tank will do the remainder of the work so let me do that and um, let me shut the camera off so we don't run out of battery again and then I'll come back when it's time to remove the straps and the job will be complete all right yes I'm here I wasn't far away See you in a little bit. All right, guys, it's time to undo the straps. I'm going to undo this one here, and I'm going to try and video that procedure. And uh, I don't know if I'll video the other one because it's the same thing, and it's very hard to work around a camera down here. So uh, let me get to it, and I'll see you in a little bit. That's that. That's the one. One more to do and I can get out from under here. The snakes and bugs are going to miss me though. Yes, they are. They're kind of used to having me around. Actually, I think I'm the main course. Well, guys, that was it. Thanks for joining me down there. It's lonely down there, let me tell you. And it's a dirty job, as you can see. I'm all cut up and stuff, and the bugs had a good time with me. Um, but the job is done, and the straps worked well. Um, total time, well, obviously, I've been working on it for two days, but not all the time, okay? So if you take 
all the time that I was away from here walking the dog and eating and stuff like that, daylight hours, minus that, <coughs> minus having to get out from under there and throw the bugs off me, minus my bitching and stuff, minus my trials and tribulations with the camera, uh, battery dying, stuff like that. Having to run back and forth for whatever I forgot, like um, a, le a lever for that one nut that I uh, couldn't get just with the regular handle on the wrench. I'm going to say total hands-on time was about maybe three hours, maybe three, maybe a little less. I don't think it was over three. So that was total hands-on time. Uh, the parts that gave me a problem was the one time with the strap where I didn't feed it correctly and it overran on the spool which caused the spool to jam. I think you caught part of that before the battery ran out. And the other problem was getting the fuel line off of the fuel pump that was in there. And let me show you. This is one of the special tools I was talking about. And what it does is it goes around the, the fuel line fitting and uh, not the fitting but the fuel line itself and then it pushes in on these two little horns that are like gripping the fuel connection and it opens it up so that you can pull it off I had a little trouble getting this one in because it's bigger than normal these come in um, dedicated sizes this one here is obviously good for more than one size fuel line but depending on what fuel line you got you can get into metal ones or plastic ones uh, and they are uh, specific to the fuel line size. This one I borrowed from Jeff. Thanks again, Jeff. Uh, actually, I borrowed a, a deep socket, an 18 millimeter socket from Jeff because uh, Sears was all out of the size I needed deep enough. So that worked out great. And I'm always thanking Jeff because he's always helped me out. But the job is complete. Next thing I got to do is the smoke test. Um, fire it up and see if the fuel pump is operating as it should and then we'll we'll take it for a little ride maybe tomorrow today's new year's eve so i want to get cleaned up and get ready for probably a party tonight so thanks again guys for helping me out just being there is a uh, great support i hope you uh, enjoyed the video if you have any questions about removing a fuel tank just private message me or put it in the comments section i try to get to the comments but it's uh, sometimes it's a little difficult and that's about it. So let's go see if it starts. All right, guys. Fuel tanks back up. Straps are put away. Everything's cool. So what am I going to do? I'm going to try it out. First off, let's see if the generator works. Okay. Mm. Tried to start. There we go. Perfect. Yep. Just needed to get that gas up in there. All right. So that worked great. Now let's see how the engine works. Wow. Started right up first try. No foot on the accelerator or anything. By the way, I read somewhere that if you have a fuel injected engine, you don't want to put your foot on the accelerator when you start it. And the reason being is that the computer reads the throttle position and it can screw it up. So there's a little something I didn't know, piece of trivia. All right, let's see how it revs. I don't know if you can hear that, but that sounds like one powerful engine. No hesitation. Let's see what happens from an idle if I stop on it. Oh yeah. No hesitation whatsoever. We got ourselves a winner here. All right guys. You know what it's time for. I got to get out of the seat and do a happy dance. So give me a minute. First, I'm going to shut the engine off. Then I'm going to shut the generator off. 
which is working perfectly. And then I'm going to get my dirty little self over here where you can get a good view of me. And I'm going to do my happy dance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Happy dance. Perfect. 